Hi guys, Joe Hildreth here from My Heat. Hey, uh, in this video, it's going to be a short one. I just want to um, send out some thanks uh, to some folks that have sent stuff um, to me uh, through the channel. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, first of all, I want to thank Mr. Uh, Wally Garricky from uh, Florida, uh, who sent me some stuff, and we'll show the stuff here in a little bit. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Leo Nadu, if I'm saying that right. And guys, if I get your names wrong, I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, from Kansas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Leo. And the other from uh, Mr. Gary Johnson here in Tennessee, a guy that I know that I met through um, through the uh, Band Boosters program uh, when my kids were in band and, and his daughter was in band, uh, who's a machinist. At, um, if you recall, he uh, he done some machine work on the lead screw uh, gearbox, reversing gearbox, uh, putting a new bushing in there for me. Um, as you recall, and maybe you recall if you've been watching the videos on my last YouTube shop student video, I um, machined the backplate for the four jaw chuck. And uh, th there are some issues there that I want to take care of. Uh, namely, um, I don't feel like I'm catching enough threads in the back of the machine, or I'm sorry, back, the back hub of the, um, of the backplate really needs to be machined down a little bit. And, um, and then you know I have a back plate for the three jaw, and I'll show I'll show that too. And it's going to need to be machined down. And I think in order to do that job properly, I'm going to have to make a little bit of a of a ring um, to put on the spindle so that the uh, when I flip the um, back plate around backwards, so to speak, and thread it on, that it actually has something uh, parallel to seat up against. So, but I'll show that. And uh, also, I'm going to show you um, uh, some gears that. Uh, uh, I had uh, one of my sons, Michael, uh, had uh, uh, one of the uh, instructors at the college he's going at uh, to print for me, and uh, I want to do some experiments with that. If you guys are familiar with Mr. Pete's uh, PLA experiment, um, you'll know what I'm talking about, uh, but we'll talk more about those uh, too here in just a little bit. So probably in the next uh, YouTube shop student video, which will probably be the next video, uh, I'm going to uh, machine this uh, spacer. Uh, kind of like big washer um, and we'll go from there so let me get the camera in position here and and uh, let me uh, show off what some of these guys have sent me and 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 uh, uh, mr. Wally mr. Leo Gary guys um, thank you so much you guys are, are have been so kind and supportive of the channel and and uh, I just I can't thank you enough so I'll uh, join you over here at the lathe on the board here in just a second Okay, so first up is uh, Mr. Wally from Florida, and Mr. Wally noticed that uh, I was using a number two uh, um, Morse taper center and a three to two sleeve, and he was kind enough to send me a, 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 a brand new uh, Morse taper three dead center. So that will be uh, that'd be a pretty nice addition. Uh, Mr. Wally also noticed that uh, you know I'd mentioned that I'd want to put a drum switch on. Uh, uh, on on my motor and he's uh, sent me uh, a nice drum switch and uh, and in conversation with uh, um, Mr. Wally and some other people you know I had mentioned that uh, my oilers don't have felts in them and I was trying to figure out how much felt and Mr. Uh, Wally says hey look I use these uh, felts from the Dremel tool you know the buffing felts and so he sent me a few of these and he suggested that uh, you stick two in each cup and it works perfectly but I think maybe he might have different size cups than I do I think I can get one in there but what I plan to do is uh, we'll put a felt in there we'll fill up the cup and then we'll see how long it takes for the uh, the oil to drain out so the normal oiling cycle um, you know they say once per shift so assume that a shift is eight hours uh, so it should take you know six to eight hours for the oil to to flow through these and of course being a hobbyist you know I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna run at eight hours but you know I still don't want to you know waste oil uh, Mr. Wally also sent me uh, some some more uh, plans hopefully you can see that uh, you know steam engine plans um, so these are these are really awesome. So Mr. Wally, thank you so much, sir. I, I appreciate all the support that you've given me and and the emails with the uh, tips and the instruction and pointing out where some documentation is and that sort of thing. And uh, um, you know, I just want I want to thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So let me uh, let me get the next batch up here and we'll be right back. So I re received an email from Mr. Uh, Leo in Kansas and he says, hey, he says. Uh, uh, you know, I notice you don't have any drive dogs, and I've got a few extra. And uh, if you um, 
need some, I'll send them to you. And, and sure enough, he did. And he sent me a variety of uh, drive dogs in different sizes. Um, what looks to be about an inch and, inch and a half or so down to maybe a um, quarter inch. Uh, these are very nice. I think there are eight of them here total. Um, so these are going to be great. I didn't have any drive dogs at all. And, and uh, these are going to be very, very helpful to me You know, if I need to turn between centers. Uh, between that and uh, he also sent uh, some Armstrong type uh, tool holders. So he sent me a left, center, and right tool holder. Uh, these whole quarter inch uh, high speed steel bits. Uh, you guys are all familiar with that. And he also sent me a couple of uh, uh, cutoff tool holders. Uh, he sent me a, uh, see this, this is a right, right? This is a right hand. I, I can't remember. So that points to the right, so that's a right hand one. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> tool holder and a straight off tool holder. So uh, these are great. You know, I didn't have, uh, I had one um, tool holder that was uh, that I that I got uh, it had been ground down so it was actually wrong it's probably for the next size up lantern uh, tool post but I didn't have any and now I have some so if, uh, uh, for that odd odd thing that you know you need to do occasionally where you know just uh, using the lantern tool post uh, helps uh, I'm all set up so mr. Leo um, uh, thank you sir uh, you've definitely expanded my tooling here and 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 making the uh, uh, making my shop better for it uh, speaking of shop, you know, I have a, I'm in the basement of my house here and I have a shop, um, but, uh, it's, uh, I'm in the middle of, uh, you know, insulating it and that sort of stuff. And, and it's a very slow process. Uh, my wife and I, you know, we, uh, work very hard to, uh, make sure we have no debt. So when you do things debt free, they take a, a very, very long time. So, but anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I digress. So, Mr. Uh, Leo, uh, thank you so very much. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, you guys are you guys are just great to me. So let me uh, let me get the next batch set up here from Mr. Gary, and uh, we'll show what we got from there. And one thing I think you'll find really interesting. So be right back. So my buddy Gary, he uh, he texted me. He says, Joe, I found a couple. He says, I found a machinery's handbook. Are you interested? Well, you know, I didn't have one. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So he uh, he stopped by my office. Says, here, I got a couple other things for you. So he gave me a, a machinery's handbook number 24. And uh, now I have an electronic version of the machinery's handbook that a user was kind enough to uh, hook me up with. Um, but it's kind of nice having the paper and this has got a little grease on it. So it's, it's got a little use. So that's cool. And, uh, he also gave me this, this is a uh, machinery's handbook, uh, 25 guide, right? So this actually goes with uh, machinery number 25, but I think it's a companion that uh, has lots of exercises, uh, you know, and using the, uh, the handbook. So I thought that was really cool. So let me set these two things here off to the side just real quick. And so the other things that he gave me, he gave me a, a Starrett uh, 60 degree center gauge and he gave me a Starrett uh, Acme uh, thread gauge, which I thought was awesome. And he gave me another Acme thread gauge and uh, those are going to be handy uh, and I appreciate it. Gary, thank you so much. But now this is the part, the, the thing that I thought was cool. He says, hey, I got a trig wheel for you. I said, trig wheel. He says, yeah, he says, uh, we keep these at our machines you know, where I work. And that way, you know, if you, you need to, you know, set up a sign bar or something, you know, is trying to remember the formula or whatever, it's, it's just real handy. So I thought, man, that's really cool. That's really cool. And this is, uh, it's called the simplifier trigonometry dial, right? And, uh, it's from Dirk's gauge dial company. So I've never heard of them, but they're out of Indianapolis, Indiana. And I don't know if this is real old or what, but now when I took it out, that's not what was in it. What was in it instead was a different Dirks uh, dial, and uh, this 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 is just this is cool. I don't know if you guys uh, have ever, I've never seen one of these. So on the back here, you know, it has uh, has the uh, has the uh, uh, tap drill size, clearance drill size for uh, fine and national coarse threads. That's the section in here, and then. Uh, Around the edge, we have dials, right? And this is the size of, you know, this is for uh, the size of pipe, what size tap drill, the OD of the pipe, and the threads per inch. Here's taper per foot settings, you know, for, it gives you the angle and the taper per inch and taper per foot. Here it's, uh, you know, for key, keyways, the length and the thickness of the keys. And then uh, over here, this is a decimal equivalence. 
So this here, you know, you have uh, 8, 16, 30 seconds, and 64. So you line up the number. So if you want to know what the decimal equivalent, let's say for 9, 64th is, you put the 9 in there, and then it gives you the decimal equivalent over here. So this is pretty cool. And then on this side, you know, this is the decimal equivalent for number drills, the decimal equivalent for letter drills. Down in here is uh, uh, the divisions of a circle and what size of the chords would be. And... Uh, this is a distance across flats for squares and hex, uh, threads per inch, and the double depth uh, of number uh, for thread cutting. And, and then this is uh, the length of taper pens and the uh, drill that you need for the reamer. And so, I mean, there's, I mean, that thing, holy cow, man, that's a lot of information packed in one wheel. And I thought that was cool as can be. Like I said, I've never seen these before. Uh, this is printed in the USA. Uh, from Dirk's uh, gauge dial uh, out of Indianapolis, and I don't know if they still make them, but this one says copyright 1943, so apparently they've uh, made them a long time. So uh, that was that was pretty cool. So uh, Gary, <laughs> uh, dude, that that's a, that's a neat little uh, uh, cheat sheet. So I appreciate it. So let me uh, let me get the camera set back up here, and I want to talk about uh, uh, face plates and. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not face plates, chuck back plates and some gears. So I'll be right back. As some of my uh, subscribers know and the people who watch, uh, when I got the sleigh, they ha had no back gears uh, other than what was on the end of the machine. And it was something uh, to set up something like maybe 16 threads per inch or something. And uh, Jeremy was uh, so kind to send me a couple gears so that I can turn three and a half thousandths, you know, a, a decent uh, feed rate with the gears. Uh, but I did uh, uh, stumble across a deal on uh, on uh, our favorite auction site that I really couldn't uh, pass up. The price was, uh, was, you know, I just couldn't turn it down. So now I have uh, all of the change gears uh, for the lathe and a couple of extra. You know, I have a 50 and a 60, so that's kind of, those are kind of odd gears. Uh, they're not included in the set, uh, but, you know, it, I guess it would probably expand what I could uh, uh, what kind of thread or feed or something that uh, uh, that we could set up. So I have every gear now except for the number 24 tooth gear. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I happened to stumble across uh, uh, a place on Thingiverse where they had plastic uh, uh, printable gears for the Atlas lathe and, and I had uh, messaged Mr. Pete and I said, hey, you know, I think these would be kind of cool uh, to make it, but will they work? And, then, you know, you got a plastic printer and you're kind of testing the bounds of plastic in the conventional machining world. Uh, what uh, what do you think of these? Do you think it'll work? So he, uh, you know, he put out a video where he printed up a um, 40 tooth gear and he tried to break the gear. He made it out of PLA. Uh, he didn't break it. So it looks like that they're promising. Uh, thing to use. Now the Chinese uh, lays the way I understand it, those come with um, those come with nylon gears, right? So um, it's not uh, unusual practice to have them. So I thought, okay, well I have two uh, children uh, who are in the uh, um, uh, technical college here, one in Clarksville and one uh, east of us in Dixon, one to be a machinist actually and the other one is uh for auto mechanics so and my uh my son who's uh going to be an auto mechanic says hey he says i'm pretty good friends with the uh um uh you know machine shop guy and and he might print those gears for you so i told him i said well what i'd like to do is um you know print them out of different materials and see what i can do see how they'll hold up now assuming that um that uh the gears that uh, the gear that uh, Mr. Pete made, you know, and he, what his test was uh, different uh, uh, feed rates with different depths of cut. Um, but now, see, the one I was missing is the 24 tooth gear. So, uh, the uh, unfortunately, the 24 tooth gear is really rarely needed. So I probably don't need it at all, right? But to have a complete set, I just wanted it. So anyway. Um, they printed, uh, he printed uh, some gears out for me. He made, uh, this one is ABS plastic. This one is PET G plastic, right? And then this one here is PLA, okay? So now, um, I'd have to look at the chart, but I think uh, 
one of these you use if you get less than eight threads per inch you got to have this gear and a super fine feed has to have this gear so i think what we'll do is we'll start out we'll try them out in a super fine feed and see how it looks uh and maybe take heavier depths of cut we should be able to take a pretty heavy depth of cut right uh comparatively speaking with a uh with a, a very light uh, or slow depth of feed you know i think the uh the uh, one of the feed rates that you can set up on the manual lathe is about one and a half thousandths or something like that so i'll have to look but anyway in a future video we're going to see what uh what these things will do but i'm not there yet but uh, just want to let you know that i did finally get uh change gears for the lathe and uh it was i'm missing one and i have three prints of one and i'm still trying to get my hands on a nylon one just to just for comparison but i think those would be interesting and uh you know as printed these uh you see if I can get this up close, uh, right there. Uh, form is very good. Uh, they're nice, nice gears, really. You know, so let's uh, we'll we'll play with those and see how that turns out. So let me uh, let me pause you here and let's talk a little bit about uh, the YouTube shop student video that I done and what uh, a little bit of a maybe a preview or or um, uh, about you know a, a little bit of a sneak peek about what I'm going to be doing with the next one so let me get these uh, situated and we'll be right back you remember in the uh, last uh, YouTube shop student video um, I had machined the back plate for the four jaw chuck and I had mentioned that I have a uh, three jaw chuck and a back plate uh, these were bought from um, CD Co tools right uh, it's a Chinese uh, Chinese chuck and back plate and uh, but uh, something that I wanted to point out uh, last time you know I machined the plate to fit the chuck all went well but you know when I when I screwed the back plate on there uh, if if you go back and look at the video you'll see that quite a bit of the uh, threads were not not engaged uh, to the spindle right and uh, the reason for is if you look back here you know you have the step that's supposed to ride up here on the spindle this is just way too deep okay so what i need to do is i need to face some of this off some of this back hub off right so that it's so that it's uh just slightly longer than this than the step that we have here on the uh, spindle and you know this is probably a quarter inch or maybe a little less you know so uh but to do that you know uh you would screw the the face plate on here backwards right uh, which you can do that but now there's nothing for the face plate to set up against uh, to ensure that it stays square right uh, after it's tightened up so what I want to do is um, is I want to machine a, a, a collar that uh, will fit up against uh, the the back surface here and extend past you know uh, just past the uh, length of the shoulder here that's on the spindle and that's that's parallel so when i screw the plate up against it it can actually seat against that collar uh you know without running out of threads and then i can machine that and then i'm i'm kind of reasonably assured that the uh that the uh back of the hub here will be parallel to the front when i go to machine it down okay and to do that i've uh, picked up a i've uh, bought a piece of um two inch aluminum that I'm going to do that with and I'll do that in a four jaw chuck and then um, when I have this collar machined down uh, I, I will uh, of course use it obviously to machine this plate here and then I will take the plate off of the four jaw chucks spin it around machine hub hub down turn it back around seat it on here normally and then take another cut to make sure that we're truly parallel and then mount the uh, four jaw chuck back on there now I'm not sure everybody wants to see all this uh, beginning machinist stuff, but I'm a beginner and I'm learning, and and uh, I've been given some great um, advice and interaction and and that sort of stuff. People uh, giving me tips and tricks and and that sort of thing, and and I and I learn that way, and uh, and I appreciate it. So anyway, that's uh, probably what's going to be in the next YouTube Shop student video and I'm hopefully uh, this is today is Saturday March uh, 2nd I guess 2nd 3rd I, I can't remember uh, I'm gonna probably try to start filming that tomorrow and get that out um, maybe tomorrow night or, or something or, or Monday or first part of Monday or so so um, 
down the road uh, some of the things that I want to do you know here in Tennessee in the winter uh, winter just means rain that's all it means and and uh, how it works here where I live is that uh, it gets cold and then it warms up enough and it starts raining and it rains for three or four days and it gets cold and then it warms up and rains and it just cycle goes over and over and over and the downside to that for me is that I can't get out and cast because I have to cast outdoors you know I'm, I've got a true fair weather foundry and uh, so what I want to do is I want to go through the process of making a, a split pattern and uh, making a steady rest for the lathe because I don't have one and I think it would just be a great project to uh, to to work on get a little machining in and and uh, that sort of stuff and, and learning for me and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, eventually I'd like to get to where you know maybe I can uh, make a simple steam engine uh, as a YouTube shop student but uh, lots and lots and lots to learn and guys I uh, just want to tell you again how much I appreciate all the help that you've given me and the advice and uh, uh, the, the things to, uh, that you've made for me, uh, T-nuts, uh, cross life nuts, uh, uh, you name it. Uh, you guys have just, you guys have done a ton to support me and hopefully um, I can produce some material um, that shows that I appreciate that and that, uh, and that I'm actually, uh, you know, you're take, taking your time to help me isn't, isn't a waste of your time that I'm actually using the stuff and, and learning. So, um, uh, I don't get the videos out as fast as I'd like to, but, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, work gets in the way and uh, I work for a hospital and, and, uh, I am the sole IT person there and, uh, we have about a hundred employees and there's a lot to take care of. So sometimes I get caught up in work and I just, just can't get in the, uh, sanctity and <laughs> of, of my shop or my basement here to, to record videos because I have other obligations. So, but anyway, uh, stick with me. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching my channels and uh, and uh, taking the time to interact and, and email and, and talk with me and, and the fellowship. It's been wonderful. So, if uh, if these uh, if you think there's an, an, another new and aspiring uh, you know guy out there who's wanting to learn this stuff and you think that you know this is useful or entertaining or helpful. Um, please share, uh, like, and subscribe if, if you like the content, uh, if you want more of the, of the content. Um, so other than that, um, thank you for your time and have a blessed day.